You've spoken about social media. You're a, quite an avid Twitter user. Um, what would be your advice in terms of how sports journalists should use social media now? You know, what are the channels that you find most beneficial? And yeah, I mean, I, I, I've used Twitter, and I, I, it was it was a very much a conscious decision that I was realizing that the whole industry was changing, and it was important to try and get a social media presence. I found that was the one that suited me, perhaps because. I'm just someone who likes to talk about rugby to anybody who talks to me about it. And Twitter is a perfect op opportunity for that. And I think the key to it is, is engaging with people. I think it's uh, keeping a cool head because it's an industry that, you know, journalists and journalists aren't the most popular always. I think it's estate agents and politicians, <laughs> the only ones sometimes we've seen as less popular. So you, you will come in for, you know, if you put yourself in the public domain, you're going to come in for criticism. So you have to sort of rise above that if, if you can engage with people politely but I think that's it it's building up it's building up a profile where people feel that if they come to you with a question or come to you with information that you're somebody who'll handle it well and be willing to engage with them and I, I'd say I would say 90% of my stories now come from contacts that are built up on social media. What would be your advice to uh, people embarking on a, a sports journalism undergraduate degree and who obviously have um, aspirations of, of going into sports journalism. What, what are the key things that you would advise them? I think um, it's not the only way to do it, but the way I like to do it is talking to people. It's going to, to, going to um, matches, it's going to press conferences, and a lot of the time you'll go to a press conference, and especially in this current day and age where you, you, your old bog standard quotes pieces may not be, you know, as popular as before. I mean, we used to fill the page after page with quotes pieces, and a lot of them would be quite anodyne, as is the nature of sport, you know, back to the drawing board. And so you may go to a press conference, come away with it, and not have a huge amount of information. But if you spend that hour just chatting to people, because you bump into people and you go to press conference venues, just talk to people, build a rapport, and when you're starting out, go to matches, talk to the journalist there, arrange to see if you can get a press pass for a game, go to that game, talk to people, talk to the journalist, talk to any of the officials from the clubs you're dealing with. Just get yourself known, but not only get yourself known, but gain confidence in speaking to people. I see more and more youngsters coming into the industry these days who find it quite challenging actually picking up a phone and speaking to people. Um, when I started out, I did a year working for the Western Mail to get some money behind me, um, working in the advertising department, ringing people up, cold calling them. Now, if you can do that, ringing somebody up for a team on Friday morning is quite easy, you know. But I think there's a, it, it, is, a, it is a challenge um, because I think there's a generation coming through now who perhaps don't spend that much time actually talking on the phone would tend to have their dialogue via social media or text, which is fine, that's the way society is now. But there are times when you need to actually be able to pick up a phone. I find that the newsroom now, it's a quiet place. You used to be a, come into the newsroom and it was chatter, 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 people on the phones all the time. What you find now is it's quite quiet. It's only oldies like me that are on the phone for all, all the time, bantering away to people. And that's the way I, I find I, I get a huge amount of sort of information is just ring people, contact people. So the biggest thing I think is get into the habit of talking to people. Not every interview is best done by sending questions on email. Just one thing I wanted to touch on. Um, there is a very much a culture of, of, of um targets in the newsroom these days, um, page views, um, what we do must mm. attract clicks, otherwise it's not worth doing. Can you give us a, a bit of an insight into what it's like to actually be in a digital newsroom now where priorities uh, have changed um, in, you know, to, to, to accommodate that? Yeah, I mean, I give the example of quotes pieces, for example. For years and years, we used to fill page after page of our newspaper with quotes pieces, and all you would re really see would be the overall sales figures for the newspaper. So there wouldn't be a specific breakdown of this story did, did this, this story did that. Now it's very different. You sit in the newsroom and we have a screen which shows us at any given time how many people are reading the articles we write. You can't get away from those facts. If you've written a story, and no one's looking at it, you have to ask yourself, did you use your time well there? I don't mind it because what it's done for me is it's made me probably think a little bit harder about each story I do and say, yes, this interests me, 
is it going to interest an audience? Um, happily, in my situation, what I tend to find is the stories that I am most interested in and the stories that I feel I put more effort into are the ones that tend to do well. In other words, the, the stories that I feel I've written well and are good subjects tend to generate the traffic. So that's, a, and I, I, maybe because I've very experienced in what I do and I've kind of ploughed a furrow, I'm kind of allowed to get on with it and there's a kind of trust there that, well, he wouldn't be writing the story unless he thought it would be of interest to people. I mean, I can imagine for young journalists coming in, <coughs> excuse me, it might be pressure, maybe not so quite aware of what will work and won't, won't, won't work. Um, but I generally think that don't worry about targets because as long as you're doing the job well, then the targets generally will take care of themselves because it's not rocket science. If you ask me what journalism is about, it's about telling people things they don't know in a clear and lucid and concise fashion and writing material that people are going to want to read. And who doesn't want what you write to be read? So if you want what you write to be read, then make it readable.